Hello, it's Randy Rhodes. Here's a clip from our show, and go to randyrhodes.com for the whole thing and a podcast. Buy a stinking podcast. Mary had a little man, man, man. The fault. We believe that all men are created to the magnificent mosaic that is America. From radio beacon to radio beacon. Change has come to America. Believe me. Knock, knock. Who's there? It's hey! a figment of your imagination. Randy Rhodes Show. Turn up your Given mind. the favorable data, enhanced testing, and approval of our health care professionals, we will allow gyms, fitness centers, bowling alleys, body art studios, huh. barbers, cosmetologists, hair designers, nail care artists, estheticians, their respective schools and massage therapists to reopen their doors this Friday, April the 24th. What? Unlike other businesses, these these entities have been unable to manage inventory, deal with payroll, and take care of administrative items while we shelter in place. This measure allows them to under undertake baseline operations that most other businesses in the state have maintained since I issued the the shelter-in-place order. That is the governor of Georgia that beat Stacey Abrams, Brian Kemp, saying that even though Georgia has 19,000 cases of COVID, they're going to reopen various businesses on Friday and then on Monday even more. Hi, everybody. Hi. So what is today? Is today Tuesday, Brett? Yeah, it's Tuesday. It's Tuesday, everybody. And I finished the internet. <laughs> and here's what I learned. I like animals, especially dogs. Florida, Georgia, and I have a family. <laughs> That's what I learned. I actually, now that I'm done with the internet, I can actually uh, turn around uh, and not face the wall so much in my little yellow office every day. And I realize I have a family. Now I will say I haven't uh, looked at them in so long that I hardly recognize him. Howard is, uh, he was growing a beard, which was re- I mean, it was bad. It was very, very bad. And he looks like Greg Brady. So Greg Brady with a beard. Yeah, not for me. Maybe for some gals, uh, just not for me. Um, I cut my bangs today with chicken scissors. Seriously, dude. I, that's what I had to do. I cut my bangs. Angie, if you're watching, how do I... It's chicken scissors. That's what I have. You know, kitchen scissors that you cut the chicken. And you're going to need those. Uh, because they're not going to be able to uh, butcher the chicken quite like you like it. You're going to get stuck doing it, so get prepared to go learn on the Internet uh, how to butcher a chicken. Learned it. Where I finished the Internet. I know how now. Uh, and I also learned America is a failed state. Your grandparents were asked to fight a world war to beat back fascism. And a half a million signed up and went to fight against fascism. A half a million men. Some were segregated in their units and still fought, came back, and were treated like dung. But they'd sacrificed. They did it. They were patriotic heroes. And women went into the factory... You can do it. Women went into the factory. Uh, My grandmother learned how to make a meatloaf for 20 people out of a quarter of a pound of chopped chuck. And you're being asked to sit on your couch and watch Netflix. You can do it. Yes, you can. You can do this. No state has met the 14-day drop in COVID cases in order to meet the president's first phase guidelines, which is still a lockdown. The first phase is still a lockdown to get to 14 days of decreased COVID cases. Let me just show you. Yesterday, when we started the show, 
There were 761,000 some odd cases of COVID. Today, as we begin, there are 810,561 cases. 810,000. Yesterday, 761. 50,000 more cases today than there were yesterday. No state has met the criteria to open. You're going to have to change the name of Georgia to New Guinea Pig. You are the New Guinea Pigs, Georgia. The only way for you to avoid being part of a dangerous and deadly experiment in pandemic management is if you run away. And we don't want you here in Florida because it's almost as bad. Tattoo parlors are going to open and jo- how do you do how do you do social distance and were they going to hit you with a 10 foot pole? And what tattoo could you possibly want right now? May I suggest reopen early, die young? Or how about DNR? Across your chest or forehead does it for me. I am telling you right freaking now. You sign a waiver refusing any medical care, any PPP payments, any unemployment benefits, and or emergency relief payments. You get a tattoo across your forehead that says... DNR or Donald Trump, whatever you want, make America great again. I don't care. And then you wear a cowbell so I know you're a spreader. Make that trend. Hashtag cowbell. Thank you. It's for your own personal safety. Oh, my God. You know, other nations throughout history have managed to function when there was a moron in charge, a madman in charge, a toddler in charge. Look at North Korea, for God's sake, okay? That's the whole concept behind dictatorships and monarchies and the Roman freaking empire. Caligula literally, he nominated a horse to be a senator. And the Roman empire continued for 400 more years. You mollify the madman, and you have a circle of wise elders run your government. We need the wise elders. We need them. And it can't be Mike Pence. He is not a lord protector. He is a closet queen who stares lovingly at the toddler president. And no, he didn't cause coronavirus. But, you know, not seeing Pearl Harbor... Uh, was a failing as well. Not seeing the coronavirus coming our way is a failing, but we turned everything around. Our parents turned everything around. Our grandparents turned everything around. And this is like we have a new Pearl Harbor every single morning and nobody does anything about it. If Trump was president during World War II, he would have yelled at the states that they didn't have an Air Force of their own. He would have yelled at the states. He would have said that each state needs a plan to stop the attack. Each state needs a plan to stop the Japanese. Stop Tojo. If he were president in 1942, he would be telling the governor of New York to stock up on fighter planes. And his son-in-law would be standing on the stage saying, some of our friends called us and they asked for fighter planes, so we sent them to those people. America is spectacularly failing spectacularly and there is a breathtaking piece okay this this very rarely do i tell you to spend your whole day reading one thing today is one of those days george packer a staff writer at the atlantic it's an amazing magazine the atlantic wrote a nine-paged article about how america is now a failed state. And I realize there are people in this country that still think America is so exceptional. You know what? You can now say that we are the greatest failed state of all time. You want to think it's exceptional? In that particular sentence, it would be true. In two months, we have failed spectacularly. 
Roads.com for the whole thing and a podcast. Buy a stinking podcast.